Hey guys, so here I am just going on a hike with actor and producer Ian Sharp. It's 97 degrees out here today, so you gotta keep hydrated, be sensible, got a lot of sun cream on. Ian's out here in Los Angeles uh, just visiting and going to meetings about his third film that's coming into pre production in October. Is that right? Uh, it starts pre production literally when I get back, so uh, yeah, beginning of October. Awesome. Now, me and Ian, we go back a long way. We both trained together at the Arts Educational Schools of Acting in London, and we basically come through the ranks together. However, as you guys know, this is my first journey into becoming a producer, producing, writing my first short film. Ian made this transition about five or six years ago. 2009. Yeah. 2009, he founded the company Achilles Entertainment and recently, which is out on DVD now, and had some success at film festivals. His movie, second feature film, Pleasure Island, is out. Um, who bought it? Who? Uh, it's been distributed in the UK by Metrodome. Okay. So yeah, it came out uh, in July in the cinemas, and then uh, yeah, it's on DVD now, on demand, the usual platforms, etc. Okay, so just tell me a, a little bit. Let's give the people a little bit of background on okay. on you as an actor no first. No well, first off, I apologise because I'm already out of breath. We're two minutes in and uh, I'm nowhere near as fit as Steven, so uh, that's another, another video though. Uh, uh, so my background is, yeah, same as Steven, went out to educational schools, always wanted to be an actor, uh, I've done a bit of telly, a bit of film, a bit of theatre, and uh, being totally honest, you know, it was, it was difficult for me as an actor, it was, you know, in and out, in and out, in and out, became very frustrated, and I, uh, I felt like I needed to take my career into my own hands, being completely honest um, I needed to do something I needed to be busier because I was definitely one of those actors that was always waiting around for the phone to ring and it just wasn't ringing yeah. so I uh, uh, 2009 I, I, uh, I put on a play uh, called kickoff which was at the Riverside Studios in London and then I was very fortunate that the play was then uh, turned into a movie and then I uh, yeah, I mean, I've been brutally honest, I had no idea what I was doing at the time. I had to learn on the job how to make films. And then in, uh, yeah, I was working on another film for quite a while. And then uh, couldn't get it off the ground for one reason or another. Um, learned a hell of a lot. You learn so much from your mistakes. And not that it was a mistake, but it was a learning process. Um, and then, yeah, 2013, I uh, made another film, Pleasure Island, which has just come out. Uh, so I can tell you how long it takes to, uh, to come to fruition. So 2013 you did Pleasure Island yeah, and did, yeah. it's literally just come out now. Yeah. So what's that, two years? Yeah, two years, mate. We shot okay. it in July. Um, yeah. Two, and two, it, two is that years. normal? Is that a normal turnaround for a, yeah. a film to go, a feature film to go from pre-production to actually out there? Well, well I mean, pre-production started beforehand. So normally you try and give yourself at least a couple of months run-up time. It's, I mean, okay. sometimes it can take... 10 years to make your first movie so yeah. there's never one set uh time frame yeah but uh actually pleasure island came do you want to know how i absolutely you know, yeah yeah so basically again i was frustrated you know, i'd made my first movie in 2009 and then you know i wanted to, to I, I was working on another film for four or five years and it just could, i couldn't get it off the ground yeah um and then i got uh, an idea to, to write a story very loosely based on my background. I just wanted to do something. I just wanted to be busy. Whether okay. that be writing, acting, directing, whatever. I just needed to be busy. You needed just to my, be creative. Oh, yeah. Mate, yeah, just for my, my, my head, you know. Yeah. Um, otherwise, you know, it could be quite uh, it can be quite challenging. So yeah. I wrote a, a short story about a character, kind of loosely based on my background. And then I gave it to a friend of mine who was actually the, the DOP, the cinematographer. Uh, the main camera guy from my first movie, loved yeah. his work ethic. We shot it in 14 days, the first film, yeah. six, 16 hour days. Wow. And he was so passionate and just so grateful to be on a movie set, um, which you should never lose. Yeah. Uh, and people notice. Yeah. Uh, and then I said, mate, look, you know, I've raised a little bit of finance. Here's a story, take it or leave it, whether you do something with it. Uh, he ran with it, ran with the characters. Um, 
and yeah, in about I think in about the space of a month, he had a screenplay. Um, and yeah, and then there we are. So that the pre-production was quite quick, but yeah. getting out there was a whole different story. Absolutely. So, I mean, you're not the first actor no. to ever take this path. You know, take essentially your career into your own hands. So. Yeah. Let's just talk about that. Can you give us any examples of other ridiculously successful actors who were struggling, yeah. um, finding it difficult being out of work and decided to take their careers into their own hands oh, by writing and producing? Can you give us any famous examples? Oh, loads and loads. Uh, and to be honest, I needed those examples as well because being brutally honest, I didn't know what I was doing. But yeah. every time I did some research on some actors that I really aspired to be like, I started seeing a, a familiar pattern where a lot of them had created their own opportunities, uh, which you, a lot of the times you don't really hear about it, yeah. although now you can because of YouTube, Google, yeah. and, and all that stuff. But, uh, oh my, uh, Vin Diesel, there's okay. a guy, was a job and actor for a long time, just couldn't get in the door for love or money, just couldn't get in the door. Wrote a short film about being an artwork actor, not getting jobs. Yeah. Steven Spielberg finds that movie. Puts him in Saving Private Ryan. I mean, that's a, a obviously a lottery example, but yeah. it happens all the time. And that that movie, um, I think I know what you're talking about. I've, it was called Multifacial. Yeah, yeah. He directed, produced, and wrote it. And I yeah. think it was not too sure about the the production quality, but he created. Yeah. You know, he didn't sit back and wait for the phone to ring, yeah. and sit on his laurels, which yeah. is the biggest mistake you can do. And there's other example, Sylvester Stallone. Oh yeah, I mean, he, he's the probably the most famous one with Rocky. Yeah. Again, couldn't get in the door as an actor. As he was walking out, said, oh, by the way, I do a little bit of writing. Oh really, bring something in. He went home, he got his, got his stuff together, yeah. brought the script, the rest is history. I mean, even now, look at the guys out there that are doing incredibly well. Tom Hardy, he produces. You yeah. know, uh, Michael Fassbender, he produces. You know, I heard a story that, you know, he was he was a struggling actor, yeah. put on Reservoir Dogs. I think he put it on as a play in, in Edinburgh. Yeah. The rest is history. Like, you've got to be prolific. You just can't hang around. You yeah. Know? And the industry, they want that too. They want entrepreneurs. They yeah. want people that are going to be out there making stuff happen. So uh, there's so many examples. I could I could be here all day. And this is this is the um, the type of work ethic that keeps actors evolving and yeah. keeps them in the game for a long time. And it's the same like writers, producers, whatever. How bad do you want it? Yeah. Because it's not gonna come to you. Exactly. Every now and again you might get actors that break through yeah. or, or, or screenwriters or whatever that get that opportunity. But yeah. 99 times out of 100, it doesn't happen. So you have to go out there and make it happen. Right, so what we're gonna, what we're gonna do is guys, cause there's so much to talk about. I'm not, I'm not gonna fit everything in with Ian in one interview. Mm. So whilst he's in LA, whilst I've got him here with me, we're gonna do a few of these. However, if you have any questions that you're desperately wanting to ask either myself or Ian, please comment on the video below. Don't forget to share and like. But before we end this one, I'm gonna ask a couple of questions that I think are really valuable questions to ask to help anyone out there, including myself, who are on that first rung of the ladder going from the transition of acting to actually taking your career into your own hands and creating. So the first question I had is knowing what you know now, mm -hmm. if you went back to making your first film, yeah. what are the first, the three most important things you would do? Okay. Uh, so you're making a short film. This right. is. Uh, a short film, I think it's the same though with feature film or okay. theatre or whatever. Number one, get around like-minded people. You you can't do it alone. You just can't. It's impossible. Okay, so build a good team. Oh, you have to be around like-minded individuals because, I'm not going to lie, it's ridiculously hard. But right. If you get a team together, you just cut your chances of not succeeding you know, by however. So that's number one. Get around like-minded people. Trust me. It'll take you a while. You'll filter through some good ones and some bad ones you know yeah but that's life that's like business whatever get around like many people so that would be number one uh number two oh God, we haven't thought about this so this is honestly yeah. this, is, uh, this is raw like okay. i said we just do it all right uh number two uh okay it's kind of two it's, it's two but it's like obviously don't take no for an answer but be, be, be prolific be tenacious 
I still learn. I went to a, a seminar with Simon Pegg, who I've got a huge amount of respect for. Again, yeah. created a lot of opportunities himself. Yeah. Uh, the number one thing he took that I took from the from the seminar and what he said at the end is because if I give anyone any, any advice, it's be tenacious. You know. So be tenacious. Be persistent. Just keep going. Keep going. Yeah. No matter what, keep going. Brilliant. Brilliant. Uh, third. Oh man, third. Third is really hard. Uh, uh, never stop learning. Okay. Yeah, there you go. And it doesn't have to be in the arts. It can be in anything. Business, whatever. Yeah. Never stop learning. Keep expanding your mind. Another one of my kind of inspirations, a mentor, although I've never met him, but I've read his stuff, is Brian Grazer, the, the Hollywood producer. Okay. Know, all Ron Howard movies and yeah. actually wrote Splash. People don't realize that. Um, yeah, wow. Uh, be curious, you know. Yeah. Uh, uh, never stop learning. Read. Know yeah. your industry because, trust me, um, not just me or whoever, if you get to meet them and you know what you're talking about, yeah. straight away uh, it shows that this guy's or this girl's serious about their, their craft, their yeah. job, whatever. Know everything about your business. And know who's in the room, is exactly. that a... Always. Yeah. Always. If you don't, you're an idiot. Yeah. You're just going to get, you know, uh, passed by. Know your stuff. Like, yeah. I mean, it's funny. I remember years ago, one of my mentors, really, uh, a lot of respect for helped me get into producing was a, a guy called Ricky B. De Blair. Yeah. You know, there was, we did a, I did a course and there was loads of actors in the room going, oh, I want to be at the, the National Theatre. I want to be at the, uh, oh, what's the? What's Royal the, Court? Yeah, Royal Court. Sorry. Yeah. It's been so long. A uh, Royal Court Theatre. And he was like, oh, I want to be in there. And he's like, okay, what have you gone and seen there? Oh, oh I've never actually been. Oh, where's the building? Oh, uh, I think it's somewhere like round there. Oh, wow. What's that about? You know yeah, I mean? like, that's, that's crazy. Exactly. Like, no... Can I swear? No, okay. no, no, no. Right. Know your stuff. You yeah. Know what I mean? But we know what would what would have been coming before <laughs> yeah. stuff, guys. Yeah. yeah. So okay, um, one more question. Go for it. Before we end this this part, part one we'll call this of a, maybe it's a two or three yeah, mate, video probably. interview. What would you tell, knowing everything that you know now? It's very similar to the other question, yeah, but. Yeah. I want this one to be more about life in general, you know, to get in the balance because mm. it's all good about being prolific, persistent, mm. ambitious and driven, but you've got to get the right balance. Yeah. So Ian Sharp is 16 years old. Yeah. He's just starting out in the career, in his career. Yeah. And Ian Sharp, the 33? 34. 34-year-old. We can cut that though. Yeah. <laughs> the 34-year-old is taking 16 year old Ian Sharp yeah. for a coffee and giving him advice. So yeah. what would you tell a 16 year old Ian Sharp? What advice would you give him? Okay, myself. Uh, uh, Knowing or, what or you know now. There, like, yeah. If you want my honest answer. Absolutely, always it's, honesty it's, on it's this like, year. Never stop learning. Okay. Like, don't take it for granted, you know, like, Go out there and, and take take your career into your own hands. Be around people yeah. that are going to help you or whatever, but like never stop, never, never stop learning. You know, happiness is progression, right? Yeah. yeah. You've got to keep progressing, you know. Yeah. Um, uh, can I say another thing as well? Absolutely. Say... As well, with all this, take it easy. Don't beat yourself up, you know, like don't keep kicking yourself. Yeah. Everyone's path's totally different in yeah. this game, but we all want to go to the same place. Yeah. Like, Relax because Relax. The, the, the years I've given myself of like beating myself up or whatever, take it easy, go for a yeah. walk, watch sports or watch, you know, I'm a big footy fan, you know, yeah. watch, you know, just get some downtime. That's so important because trust me, it's, it's, it's a, you know, a cliche, but it's a, yeah. it's a marathon. It's, it's not a sprint. I'd say, is it that, that famous saying, uh, step by step, we get ahead, but not necessarily in fast spurts. Yeah. Can't remember who said it, but Charlie, that, Munger. Charlie Munger, there you go. There's a prime example of, of reading being prolific. So, so yeah, guys, get that balance and, and just make it work. The world doesn't owe any of us a favour. No. We only get one shot at life in general, but we get a lot of chances to learn and improve. Mm -hmm. So keep curious mm -hmm. and keep working hard towards your goals, but don't forget to stop as cliche as it sounds, and smell the roses. Mm. Enjoy the process, enjoy the journey. And yeah, just remember that we've got to earn what we deserve. The world doesn't owe us any favours, and the world is not yet a crazy enough place to reward a bunch of undeserving people. So guys, um, there'll be a link to 
Ian's new show, uh, film, sorry, Pleasure Island. Yeah. So if you want to check out the trailer and find out where you can, you can watch the movie, it'll all be in the link below. I appreciate it. Any questions you want to ask myself or Ian, please comment below and we'll do one or two things. We'll leave a write back in comments or we'll actually video a response to you guys. So yeah, I'm out of breath now. We're at the top of this hill. It's a bit crazy. I'll pan round so you can kind of see where we are. Bright sun. So yeah, guys, this is the end of week three. Next week is a is a big week, a scary week. So I'm so glad that I've got got my friend here to give me some great advice and you guys into now building my team, approaching directors, things like that. He's helping me flesh out a budget, the amount of money I need to try and raise. And he's gonna also give me ideas of how to go about raising that money. There's lots of different things out there at the moment and we're gonna discuss that in next week's videos. So yeah, thanks for watching guys. I hope this helped. Please make sure that you like and share this video. Click on the links below. And yeah, any questions you want to ask, go ahead and ask them. And as of Monday, all these videos in this video journal, this 12 week journey that I've been recording will be in chronological order on my YouTube channel that I've just created. So don't worry if you've missed any of these, you can watch them all on YouTube. Okay guys, enjoy the rest of your weekend. Bye bye.